What is up guys, we doubles back again with a brand new video. Today I want to try Dragonflight. Look, what we're gonna do in this video is every single brand new Dragonflight dungeon, every single bit of play you can get from 1 to 70 within reason, and also checking out max level PvP. This is all happening right before M Plus comes out for Dragonflight. Listen, you guys have been telling me in the comment section, try it out, give Blizzard a chance, okay? The game is actually good. So, I created Doubles the Shaman, going back to the mascot of the channel, and we're gonna make it happen. Hope you guys enjoy the video, let's jump right in. Okay guys, so as I said, we're currently level 63. What we're going to do is finish leveling to the max level of this expansion, level 70 in this video, show you guys a little bit of all the zones, the dragon riding, the new features, try to get into some of the new dungeons, and then we'll get to max, do some mythics, get all the way up there, do some BGs. That's gonna be great. We'll give our take on the game at the very end of the video, and maybe we'll make more videos if you guys like it. But as you can see, I've got my beautiful flower, I've got my eyes being covered, full on hippie status. I gotta be real, I'm liking it, man. Stop. Blizzard has been in a weird place in the last, let's just say, five years or something like that. You think you do, but you don't. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, but everybody is saying Dragonflight's really good. It's not actually bad. It's not actually BFA. Oh my god, is that true, you say? Let's give it a try. Okay, guys, Ruby Life Pools. This is the first place I have to tackle for these quests that I've got right here. So we'll go ahead and play Enhancement Shaman through it. We'll tackle each of the bosses. We'll give our take on it. We'll see if it's any fun. So I think one of my favorite things right now about Retail WoW is that you can actually get a Lava Burst proc off Maelstrom, which if you played Shaman in like, let's say Wrath Classic, for example, that's just gonna sound really badass. And it is, you know? Lava Burst auto crits on a Flame Shocked target, which is pretty cool as well. There you can see it actually procs and boom. Okay, I tossed out some more Lava Burst, but guys, we are finally pulling up on the first boss in this clip. And this is my very first boss of the expansion. To me, this is going to set the tone. What should I expect? Obviously, it shouldn't be too hard, uh, but what about those mechanics? Well, it didn't disappoint, actually. Okay, we have Meladrusa Chillworn, first boss. Let's go in. I'm gonna start off and just pop Lust, just pop everything, because I actually don't know if it matters or not, but I think the best way to play is definitely to try to just DPS her down as quickly as humanly possible, by whatever means necessary. I'm in Air Ascendance right now. It transforms Storm Strike into basically a ranged Storm Strike, and uh, it does more damage, it's proccing my Wind Fury. I'm using this brand new ability called Doom Winds. There's a lot going on, maybe to Dragonflight's detriment. You know, if you're a Wrath Classic player, for example, even, you know, a SOM player, or even a private server player, one thing you will notice right off the bat is that every single class in this game feels like you know, Wrath of the Lich King Warlock or something like that, you know, where you just have five billion rotational abilities, a quadrillion niche abilities, and you just have to somehow make that work, right? But there you go, Meladrusa dead. So, okay, let's explain what went down. That was actually a pretty cool fight for my very first boss fight of the expansion. Ice Spikes get spawned, Chill Storm literally as a spell gets uh, put down, which is a puddle that pulls everyone to it. Some synergy there with the uh, spike for the boss. Uh, we've also got some little wave of whelps that spawn at some point. You really want to go hard on the boss, cleave down those whelps ASAP. They actually give you a stack of primal chill, and if you get too many of those, it's really a big no-no. And overall, it was a pretty fun fight and pretty interesting. I'd give it a solid B+, honestly. Okay, so they need our aid above, so I have to drive one of these radiant drakes, right? I just click on it and the Radiant Drake just takes me all the way up. So the Ruby Life Shrine is a place you can actually quest in. It's one of the very first places that you get introduced to. So this dungeon takes place in here. Apparently we have Kokia Blazehoof and Kiraka and Urquhart Stormvane left. Dude, these names, what the hell? Okay, now we've got Kokia Blazehoof, man. Lava Bursting right off the bat. We're in Air Ascendance. I'm just gonna keep spamming Wind Strike. I love the Lava Burst Instant Cast. As somebody that played Shaman in previous expansions, that's extremely exciting. There we go, dead. We actually did pretty good on that one. And boom, brand new weapon. Weapon, man, this is a crazy big AOE pull. What the hell? Frost shock and it's hitting everybody. That guy's flash firing. I can interrupt that. Go for the chain lightning as well. This is sick. Oh. What did I die to? Tempest Storm Shield? Dude, this freaking high channel or Ravati just straight up clapped me out of the game. Okay, we can just pop everything, I guess. So everything is being popped and everything is popped. And we'll just keep wind striking, I guess. Again, when it comes to rotational stuff, I'll care more at max. Uh, at this point, I want to figure it out myself. One thing I'm hoping for, and I could be wrong, let me know in the comment section what you think, is that there isn't just an already thought out, everybody already knows how to play meta, where you cookie cutter everything and, you know, there is one obvious best way to play. I'm hoping that people actually have to think about things sometimes or can or have the ability to themselves. And uh, that could be really, really fun, you know? Oh, by the way, we almost came in first. We did almost! Oh my god, the DH beat me. Okay, so we just got gold, but we did nail a weapon for this one. Overall, I'd give this one also like a solid, maybe even 
even a 9 out of 10. Now, these ratings might change once we experience more dungeons, uh, but this is my first impression, right? The Mythic Plus version, the Heroic version, this could all drastically change. But for a first impression, for, you know, aesthetic, it has to give a solid 10 to it. I think it's beautiful. I think it was really fun to play. Lots of AoE, lots of single target opportunities for all sorts of specs, and uh, overall fast. Fast, fast, fast dungeons. That's what I like as a fast dungeon. Straight to the boss, straight to the point, and that's what you're going to get with Ruby. So, I'll take it. So, I'll be real. Like, you know, Sabellian, Rathian, who actually wants Sabellian to win, bro? I, I Like, no one, right? Like, he might be bigger, but, like, he is infinitely less cool. Infinitely less cool. Uh, Rathian should win, bro. Every single time. There we go. Boom. Got that first little achievement. Rathian's Gambit. Only have one more to do here in the Waking Hope. I'm actually pretty excited about it. We'll be 65 soon as well. Okay, there we go. I got the Waking Hope achievement. Okay, so that is, uh, Nokudun Hold. Nokudun Offensive. That's what it is, the dungeon. And we just killed the last boss. It's a centaur-based dungeon. It's actually pretty interesting. I love the way that they've reworked the centaur. My only gripe is that they have a basic accent, right? And also, it might be in the game, but I haven't seen any Mongol throat singing and this is really a missed opportunity for me if it's not there they should have a mongolian accent or something like that if you know history you know like something like that like a step warrior type of thing going on because they got the aesthetic right uh but yeah this is pretty cool my overall assessment is that the best part of this dungeon is the flying all over the place so you do actually get to use your renewed proto drake it's actually one of the most fun things i really didn't think i would like it typically i'm immune to blizzard gimmicks on their expansions like they don't excite me anymore i don't care uh but this one in particular is actually really fun with the dragon riding and you get to do it all throughout this dungeon which i think is really good design. We also ended the dungeon by getting this uh, Windborn Velocidrake Feathery Tail, and I don't have this yet apparently, so let's go ahead and use this. We're deciphering that, and this is going to be customization for our dragon. We'll look at this later on in the video, I guess, when we unlock more stuff. We can do more stuff with it, but uh, that's going to be pretty cool to look at as well. Overall, I'd give this dungeon in terms of difficulty a zero. It was not hard at all. In terms of aesthetic, I'm going to give it a solid out of ten, right? Uh, let's give it a solid seven and a half, okay? I think it was a good aesthetic aesthetic is really fun. Best part is the flying, of course. We did have somebody bail. Lots of people are constantly AFKing through the dungeons and stuff. I guess that means they're bored or something like that. So that kind of ruins the experience. But I would give the overall dungeon experience of the Nokudan area, the Centaur dungeon, right? I'd give it a solid eight overall. Honestly, that's not too bad. It's pretty good. I'll never understand World of Warcraft, bro. Bros have me freaking throwing a rake up at fruit and trees. You think you do, but you don't. I'm a shaman, man. I could conjure wind to make them come down. I could shoot it with lightning. I don't even understand, man. Okay, level 66, guys. Four more levels to go until we get to max. We have moved away from the waking shores, my friend. We are now attempting to do the quest in the Oneron Plains, and this is actually pretty cool. The centaurs are here. They've got brand new models and everything. So I'm discussing the next steps to deal with the no-cud. That's what actually played out in that last dungeon I showed you guys, where it was the centaur-based one, where we got to ride our dragon the whole time, and so I'm getting a bit of the lore there. So I'm going to keep leveling. Cultural exchange, apparently, by the way. I could pick a toy. What's a cool toy? Pile of pelts, cooking pot, or a very... Com I want to get the very comfortable Where pelt. What does that do? I used it. I can click it, and my guy can go to sleep or just sit on it, I guess. Okay. Well, I'll take it. Okay, here's what I can say so far about this centaur zone, which is, you know, known as the Onaran Plains. I think that's how you say that. This is amazing. I am getting hardcore Nagrand vibes. Um, the whole- look at this. It's just beautiful. I'm genuinely enjoying myself. Look, I don't like menial quests, but uh, I've been hearing from a lot of people who are really in the Dragonflight that the questing system is really fun for them. I think to myself, come on, bro. Uh, but no, I actually see myself getting lost in it, and this zone in particular is amazing. I gotta say, there's something happy about it, too, knowing that uh, I'm already level 66, and with the turn-in of this quest, I'm actually gonna be 67. For someone like me that likes to get to the end game, this makes me feel a little bit less hopeless. I've heard that the way it works now is that they zip you to max so that when you get to max, you can just do all the grinding for quests at max level. The reputations are also vastly different now as well, and that's been really weird. You can click this Dragon Isle summary thing on the minimap, and they call them something different now as well. They call them Renown. So I have Renown levels, and it gets to like brand new words, like I have Acquaintance and Neutral as opposed to the, you know, typical Hated, Neutral, Friendly, Honored, Revered, and uh, Exalted that we're used to. And it's very interesting. I haven't unlocked 
unlocked the Tuscar yet, although I can't wait to do so. Uh, but you unlock kind of like a battle pass type thing. Different things happen as you get your renown up. It's completely different, though, from how reputations normally are, where you literally don't really get anything good until revered, and a lot of the times not even until exalted, which means it's like boring up until you get the reward. I've heard from people who have farmed out this new renown system quite a lot that the new feeling is that you're getting something all along the way, and they like that personally. So, okay, interesting to think about. Okay, level 68, we just got our very first dragon that's not the main normal dragon, and that's pretty sick. It's the Windborn Velocidrake. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty goofy looking, but it is different, so I'm definitely gonna start riding this one instead. Way smaller than the other one, but it looks like it works the exact same way. So weird, though, man. Still, I'm actually surprisingly having fun. Okie dokie, guys, level 68, just got another achievement. I wanna roll, so there we go. We're getting more stuff done in this uh, little centaur zone. Still haven't been to Thal Drazus or the Azure Span, but uh, you know what? A level and a half to go. One hour later. All right, guys, I'm level 69. Nice. And we are currently in the third zone of the video, the Azure Span. Still haven't been to Thal Drazus. I mean, I have one time just to check out Valdraken, but no quest brought me there. I just went there for fun. I'm here now for the main quest, though. I guess it's green dragon here, red dragon there, blue dragon here, and some other dragon I'll acquire through the campaign here. That's what I think. So I'm going to go ahead and meet Caligos right now. What is this little thing? Wait, can I get on that? Nesting where he's wagon? Oh, <laughs> I will take it, bro. So we're just chilling now. It's an ice zone. It kind of gives me like a mixture of Howling Fjord and uh, for some reason, winter spring vibes, but it's completely different than those two as well. It's just, wait, I'm not going the right way. Yo, Nessie Worry, I gotta go. I'm sorry, bro. I gotta go down this road. Meet Caligos, like I said. But dude, I really enjoy this. Look how beautiful that is. Like, ah. Uh, wait, so are these dudes like spectrally, the like, they're not actually here. They're mirror images, dude. It's a bunch of Caligos mirror images. That is so sick. He just has a bunch of versions of himself. How can you help? Well, I have a bag of helpful goods to give you, so it looks like I'm the one helping you. Good luck. All right, Caligos wished me good luck. It looks like I've got some more quests to do. One thing I will admit is that, as I told you guys earlier in the video, friends of mine who are really into this game told me they really like the questing. I was like, bro, come on. Uh, but I do find myself, as I think I also said, losing myself in this uh, questing adventure, and that's a good thing. If you could just literally not even realize how two hours passed, that means it must be interesting enough for you to be able to get through it without wanting to kill yourself. And that's a big deal for WoW questing, because it gets really boring in certain expansions, let's just say. And you really do have to mentally push through, I feel like. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't have to mentally push through so far Welcome at all for Dragonflight. Our... It's sort of just, wow, well, every well, little person friend. is just a mirror image of Calit Ghost. Uh, but yeah, I just play the game and enjoy it at all times so far. We'll see how it is at max. As I said, we will be doing some max level stuff. But I did just want to show you the beauty that is the Azure Span. Oh my goodness, dude. Let's just like go really high up, okay? Oh my god, let's just go all the way up. I love dragon riding, bro. All right, if I turn around now. Wow, oh my god. Wow, dude. And now we can dive. Wait, am I supposed to be using this? Who cares? I'm just going to dive. Oh god. I love it. All right, let's keep questing, guys. So in my honest opinion, Blizzard messed up right here. Not in a real way, but like if you look over there, there's a hyena dancing named Lulu and I can kill it. And I just don't understand why they would let me do that. Like if you look at this little like, uh, they, they're called hyena masters, but they're like gnolls, right? Like if you just looked at them, right? There's like Leela right there. Like, why would I kill this little group? Like, you can't give them names, dude. It's like when you get a stray. Like, I obviously can't take strays in because if I do take one in, I'll name it and it'll be mine. Call it Hyena. Just call it Pet Hyena or something crappy like that. It doesn't matter. I can't go in that village and kill those. And if that hunter touches them, he's going to die. Okay, fine. I killed them for the quest. I didn't have a quest before when I said that the first time, man. I don't feel good about it. And now I'm sad. Do you guys hear this? This is straight up Howling Fjord right now, man. Oh, now the music's changing. Oh my god, I missed it. There are parts of this zone that literally just feel like Borean Tundra, Howling Fjord, and Dragon Blight if they mixed them all together. I'm doing Tuscar quests right now, which makes me very happy. Haven't quite unlocked the faction yet, though, but I guess I'm on my way. And by the way, I'm one bar until 70. That's just insane to me how fast this was. Like, this is so fast. And there we go, level 70, guys. I did it. You know, I'm actually going to keep questing until I unlock the Tuscar faction, and then I think I will start gearing myself up on my own time. And the next thing you guys should see is me trying every single dungeon in mythic mode though uh so that we can actually get a proper feel for what's going down right now on uh well dragonflight right let's make the video worth it and do the max level content so i'll see you guys in a bit and so in many ways the uh real journey began so i went ahead and
and I have like what 300 item level to start I got a friend of mine who already was you know basically fully progressed probably 370 plus item level something like that and we queued for mythics together now this is pretty pivotal because really people weren't going to invite me unless they wanted that person the friend of mine to basically carry uh, so that was good for me big thanks and shout out to you but what it meant is that I could skip the heroic grind for the most part for now jump straight to mythics and show them to you guys and that's what you're seeing in the background right now I will say um, I will go ahead and occasionally put up my first impression rating for all of the dungeons that you guys see and uh, most of all it was really good um, I really enjoyed it so it looks like according to my friend who's been playing this game for a bit that I did things completely different. They recommended that you actually do the campaign the entire way through. I had a little bit of OCD and did like all of these side quests and I got wrapped up big in the centaur area as you guys know. I really thought this was like the most fun ever. So I, I kind of prioritized fun if you know but it's my kind of fun. You know somebody could think just doing the campaign is also fun. Because they already have a decent item level we were able to queue up for mythics and people kind of gave me a pass. I didn't do horrendous I guess but I did just get my very first piece of genuinely decent loot which is the lightning charge striders that's got mastery on it that's something i know i want big time right now and uh, as we do every single brand new dungeon in dragonfly in mythic hopefully we pull more and more pieces and we get a sense of what i typically do on this channel which is gear progression game progression and we end up with a lot higher item level so you know what overall we've already done this one before so there wasn't really too much to show the mechanics i know there are different separate mythic mechanics but the only thing that gave me any trouble was i'll show you here down here on the raging tempest i I needed to go into my talents and I needed to take purge which was kind of cool because having purge allowed me to get rid of one of his uh, buffs that was wiping us uh, so to speak that's what they were telling me so when I got the purge and I was able to remove it as soon as I possibly could it ended up being really easy to beat that boss overall but other than that you know step out of the fire don't step on the lightning on the ground you know stuff like that dodge AOE that's like the name of the game as far as I could see this is one of the longer ones as far as I've played so far though so let's do some more guys I'm actually pretty excited it's pretty fun and so yeah that was the very beginning beginning my friends so we went ahead and we did the azure vault which was pretty cool as well i would say my overall first impression for this is that i did really much feel like i was in uh wrath of the lich king a lot with a lot of this uh blue dragon stuff but i guess that's not necessarily a bad thing i would say overall i was just like seven out of ten you know it felt just fine by the way there's really no hang-ups not to say we didn't wipe from time to time but it just wasn't particularly difficult i did go back to the ruby life shrine eventually as well the mythic version did have some different mechanics here and there not enough to really be that deep. And then I saw myself in Ultimon, which I did not even know was a part of the expansion. So that's a pretty big deal for somebody like me. I like the old school classic dungeons, vanilla dungeons, I should say. I go into Ultimon. I think it's like literally a different like aspect of Ultimon that we've never explored before. I don't think it's just Ultimon remade. Could be wrong, but that's what I think, at least on first impression. Lots of people have been telling me they don't like Ultimon as much, but I think it was wonderful. And I would give it a solid 8 out of 10 in terms, again, this is just a general subjective rating on overall impression impression concerning difficulty, fun, um, aesthetic, uh, you know, just boss encounters and mechanics, and it's just completely subjective, but it does give you an idea. Overall, nothing is a low rating so far, and that's pretty cool. Oldemon, super duper fun, a lot of interesting mechanics. I'd like to do more dedicated videos on a lot of these dungeons where we actually go into them and, you know, progress more and look at the mechanics more, but I am very much impressed so far. Uh, you have to understand, we got into Mythics quick, and uh, most of my wipes are going to have to do with me being really low item level, and uh, also us having to go into basically any group that will accept us because people see my item level and they're like yeah i don't know about that and then the people that do invite us are the ones that think to themselves ah oh, screw it we'll take a risk right we'll take a chance it's late at night we want to get the dungeon done uh so there were mistakes here and there but again i think the game is really easy so far so we'll have to see what happens with mythic plus when that comes out a few days from the uh release of this video Okay, so now we just got done with Brackenhide Hollow. This was actually a pretty long and uh, just strenuous dungeon to get through, man. There's a lot of packs. Uh, there's only a few bosses, but um, we got our quest done. That's pretty good. And we got brand new legs. So I am getting something each time so far. Now I've got the upgrade Tacits of Densified Ooze, 372 item level to replace my green horde leggings of the Decimator. I'll definitely take that. That's pretty nice. 320 item level and probably even higher once I turn this quest in. I won't lie to you guys I basically kind of like zippy through this dungeon in terms of my mental. It's a null dungeon though So it's just more of that null lore. Uh, so I would give this dungeon like a solid like Seven or no, actually no, I'd give it like a six out of ten That was the first number that popped up in my head. So I'd give it a six out of ten 
it's neat to have more Knoll lore, but I'd say on the overall, it was just kind of average. Two pieces of gear, let's keep it up. So then came the dungeon Nelthalris, I believe that's how you say it. And I gotta show you guys my favorite fight and also a fight where I got an awesome, awesome item that really just like made me happy to be real, but that's Chargath Bane of Scales. Now this actually has some unique mechanics that I thought was pretty cool. One of the things you're going to see with this guy is that he utilizes something called grounding spears and grounding spears is going to essentially be something that he locks you down with and you can trip him by maneuvering your character in a way in which you know I guess his legs are going to match up with the chain that your character is now producing as a result of the ability used on you and when you do that he becomes vulnerable and it knocks him down for two seconds is basically what I'm trying to say I just thought it was a really neat and awesome little fight and uh, I, I just liked it that much and like I said we got an absolutely crazy item at the end now I'm not gonna lie to you guys I didn't know what the mechanics were on this fight and it was also very easy to do this mythic fight without following the mechanics but going all the way up to like m plus 20 i think on launch i think that's how it's going to work um a lot of these mechanics that we can skip over now are not going to be so skippable and that's something to think about you know this will be a fight probably where people wipe if they don't perform this mechanic right and that's going to be really really nice to actually feel like it's worth it to master all the different forms of mechanics attached to all of the bosses so far all of the bosses seem to have at least something that if you pay no attention to it at all you will probably be punished for it at a difficulty that will challenge you and that's where m plus once again comes in i will say for my overall neltheris uh first impression rating i would give it like a solid eight out of ten um i enjoyed this chargath forge master gorak magma tusk warlord sarga this was cool and genuinely fun to play you got to see a lot more of the draconids and stuff like that as well throughout this dungeon and uh, it was also a pretty unique theme as far as i'm concerned as well Alright man, we're gonna be doing Halls of Infusion now. This is gonna be on Heroic. I already did the Mythic version, but as you'll see with the next dungeon as well, I misplaced some of the clips. You know what? It was a high night. Whatever that means, right? Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and spread uh, Flame Shock with Lava Lash, start clearing these guys out, and we'll see what all four of these bosses are all about. So the dungeon had just started, and I switched to a different spec at the very last second because I thought, man, I'm not doing enough DPS. Yo, I got kicked. And you know what? That's going in the video for time's sake, you know what I mean? It's actually a proper representation of what's going on. I've seen this stuff on Reddit, too. I think I got kicked for being last place, even though we never fought a boss, and it didn't even start yet. Wow, dude. Yeah, I PM'd this one guy because I liked his build. I was like, you need to PM me that build, bro. The shaman said he voted no, but damn. First impression, though, because I did do it in Mythic, I would say it's just like a solid 7 out of 10. It was enough for me to literally forget to actually record it, and also enough for me to forget that I put it in the video, and so now I'm obviously sneaking it in last second. Also, for some reason on Dragonflight, you get Dungeon Deserter if you get kicked, even if it was the way it just happened for me, which maybe could even be classified as, like, toxic, man, because I didn't do it literally anything. Thing and I got kicked. So, huh, that's actually the first real negative experience I've had on the entire expansion. It's just something about the retail and classic WoW communities, man. Like, no offense, because you could be a good person and play the games, but there's like a higher proportion of garboness, man. Okay, guys, so we've got the very last dungeon, Algathar Academy, and I did do the mythic version of this. I will go ahead and show you guys the gear I've acquired. I'm pretty happy with it. The epic stuff specifically, Helm of the Hardened Gold. I think that's what it said. Yeah, okay. And then we have Cloak of Lost Devotion, Fate Bound Chainmail. I got a Havoc Crusher, the epic one we got the uh, rare one earlier which was pretty cool too tacits of desensified news you guys saw and the lightning charge striders and the erupting spear fragment the awesome trinket i alluded to before i did the mythic version of this but i did somehow forget to record it so here we are doing the heroic version now just so we can show it off this is actually a super quick dungeon i think that's why i forgot to record it and uh yeah it's actually really easy as well so we'll be able to tackle all the bosses here real quick uh do some live commentary on it i'll show you guys how some bgs have gone so far give you my take on that with some arena as well show you guys a little bit of the dragon riding stuff we'll acquire the last two dragons you guys haven't seen yet in this video and we'll wrap it up with that i'm actually pretty much enjoying this game right now and uh, i know it's just a bit of a one-off thing for me right now but if you guys do enjoy this content for dragonflight and you want to see mythic plus or arena or bgs or anything like that at max level with good gear and stuff like that all you got to do is like the video and let me know in the comment section below Okay, Overgrown Ancient, I'm in my PvP spec right now, sadly, but I think it should be just fine. Uh, let's see what mechanics this guy might have. And I don't think this is on current fight, so now it is. Okay, there we go, we can see that. I do have everything buffed, right? Yeah, I did, okay. I did just double check that real quick. Storm Strike. I don't have Chain Lightning on my bars with this PvP spec, oh no. 
Primordial Wave, though. That's a pretty cool spell with the Lightning Bolt hitting really hard. Feral Spears can come back out. Okay, there was no mechanics on that at all, actually. Like, nothing happened. That was the first true tank and spank that I can actually remember. Now, I will say this place is really beautiful. So, for aesthetic right off the bat, it does remind me of that Wind Dungeon and Wind Raid from uh, all the way back in Cataclysm. I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be standing in here, right? I'm gonna get hurt. Just barely made it out. Okay. But yeah, it does remind me of the Alakir type of stuff. Uh, just as beautiful. Um, actually more beautiful because it's more modern and updated and stuff like that. But look at that massive damage. When I get off this crazy Primordial Wave spell, this came from Shadowlands, by the way. So I've never played with it before because I didn't play Shadowlands. Uh, but it makes my next Lightning Bolt hit for 150% more damage. For PvP, that's led to some nutty burst from range with Enhancement Shaman. Although I feel a lot stronger in like single target PvE so far. I do think that my AoE is supposed to be pretty good as well. Alright, we're about to fight Croth. So the first guy had like no mechanics and I think... Uh, I do remember this from Mythic. We have to pick these balls up and throw them in the hoop. So let's do that. I just want to be one of the ones that does it. That's pretty cool. There's two of them, by the way, and I think they give different uh, buffs, but I think a lot of people are picking this one right now. So boom. All right, here we got a giant Raven Lord, basically. When it comes to the rotation right now with PvE, I'm definitely still just kind of like clicking things. I have a prio in my head, but I know it's not perfect. Does that make sense? So uh, we're still learning. Uh, obviously, it's only been a few days at best with Shaman in this expansion so far. But actually, my single target's doing pretty good. The problem is, with this version of the spec, I'm very cooldown based. So I'm probably about to fall down heavily um, because I just don't have anything. Like, I lost steam, as you can see, compared to earlier in the fight. But we'll see if these guys can catch up because I, like, went way above them during my burst phase right there in the beginning of the fight. We could do Sundering right there. 42k no crits, pretty fun. I actually really like the gearing progression so far in this game as well. As you saw, all the mythic stuff I got so far just feels really good. Do I have to throw these balls in a hoop? Let's just try it. I can still cast spells while I do it. Oh my gosh. All right, I threw it in that hoop over there. I don't even know if you have to. Maybe everybody's ignoring the mechanics because it's heroic. Okay, but yeah, that guy's dead. And there were some mechanics, but again, like this was super duper easy. I do recall not even having to really use my brain during the mythic mode either. So this must be one of the easier dungeons you can even do. Now, I do love that people are already like figuring out how to to, like skip everything as well and like blizzard i think also builds around that nowadays okay third boss veximus all right let's see how we do guys spamming wind strike because i'm in this uh special ascendant mode I, I need to have my feral spirits out we'll get used to everything i just want to come in first place it looks like that death knight is like way above me right now can i get above him i can trinket right there for extra damage i really like that brand new trinket okay i am in first place can i finish the fight off what okay reincarnate sunder because i don't want oh i don't want to lose my dps spot i didn't there we go, I'll take it. That just makes me feel like I'm progressing, you know what I mean? Like, at the beginning of the Mythics I was doing, I wasn't doing so well, obviously, because I had, like, 310 item level. I'm at 355 now, and I'm pretty happy with that. No gear so far from this, but it's possible that we get an upgrade. So one more boss to go. Why are they jumping off the cliff? All right, why question it? Maybe it's faster. I jumped off the cliff, too. Okay, the Echo of Doragosa. Can we go ahead and catch up here and do decent damage? I sure hope so. Go for that Primordial Wave. Maybe I should do that first. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We have the uh, Doom Wind as well. I don't know what expansion that came out in, but it's something that I have. Basically makes Wind Fury stuff better. Keep Wind Striking. Lightning Bolting because Elemental Blast is on cooldown. Oh, crap. I couldn't make it out of that in time. That sucks. One thing I've been told from people that take retail serious is that it's actually a big deal nowadays if you step in something. Like, actually, there are plenty of expansions where if you step in stuff, it just doesn't really actually matter. It's like best practice not to step in it, but again, like, it doesn't actually matter. But apparently, it does matter in retail. So I do need to keep that in mind because I've built up horrible habits throughout the years. Okay, I think she's going to die. And this was so freaking easy, dude. Finish her off with a lightning bolt. 62k crit. There we go. Did I come in first? I did. I didn't get anything, dude, actually at all, as far as I can see from these dungeons. I got this uh, illusion parchment, but I have no idea what that even means. So what do I think so far of Algathar Academy? Actually, that's one of my more favorite ones because number one, it's super easy. Number two, it's super short. And uh, so number three, it's going to be easy gear and just fun when you actually do it. Um, I like it. That's to me is a solid like nine out of 10. And we've only had one other like that. And for the exact same reasons, Ruby Life Shrine, I believe. Okay, that was pretty awesome. Okay, guys, so the next stop really was BG's in Arena. I'll show you guys in the background what's going down. Basically, I'm playing Enhancement Shaman, right? I pick up a build utilizing the Primordial Wave Lightning Bolt uh, combo, which is pretty nice burst from afar, which I really enjoyed using. And one thing I noticed is that gear is as it tends to be in World of Warcraft, a relatively big deal. The difference in Dragonflight, though, is that gear acquisition is actually not hard. And it's also fun, which is like a difficult line, right? Like, it's not always done right with every expansion. And so typically, when gear 
gear is a problem, but gear is kind of difficult and boring to actually acquire, it's not, you know, a good mix. The thing with me right now, though, is I saw myself quite literally queuing for a BG, and if I win, I can basically right then and there afford a new piece of gear. And that kind of also will end up equating to upgrading your gear. Maybe a BG win, maybe two at certain levels, you'll be able to just straight up upgrade your gear right after the BG. I think that's a really good pace. You do have large gaps in power level, I did notice. Some people have 300, 350,000 HP. Other people are at like 150 and they get slaughtered brand new, right? And then we have people like me, they're like 200 to 250 K and that middle ground. And then there's like another group, I would say in the middle of me and the even stronger guys at 350 K. One thing I do know from looking up some different PVP guides and stuff from people that are making them for Dragonflight right now for Enhancement Shaman is that apparently Enhancement Shaman is pretty good against casters, which has always made sense and always really been the case, but not so good against melee, which again, it's not really any different from previous expansions. Uh, and I definitely did feel that. You can kite them though with like Earth Grab Totem and your Slow Totem and your Frost Shock. So there is a skill factor there with your hybrid nature. Uh, some things like Warriors, for example, if you don't get bodied right off the bat, it's pretty easy to beat them. But obviously take that with a grain of salt, considering the fact that with higher skill, everything I say could be moot, right? We have to actually get there to figure it out in that regard, or at least to see it more. The expansion's not even two weeks old as of this recording. Overall though, my PvP first impression is actually intensely good, which is not expected to be honest with you. I would say that right now, Dragonflight PvP at max level, not at all while leveling it. While leveling, it's not that great. But at max level, it is a solid 8 out of 10 so far. 8 out of 10, why? Well, number one, it's easy to gear as far as I can see. Number two, various power levels mean that you don't immediately feel like you're getting fraternity hazed as soon as you get into PvP as a new player, which is a big problem in previous expansions where as soon as you queue up, you're getting one shot by anybody that's acquired a full set of gear. There's multiple levels of it now, and that gives you more of a chance, and at least right now, early on in the expansion. Class power levels are definitely not all, you know, perfect, but that's the nature of a game with a lot of different classes and specs, and I would say for the most part, even though there are outliers blizzard actually seems to be hot fixing them and fixing them so i would say that i didn't really notice anything feeling like it was 100 percent not fair does that make sense nothing felt like it was 100 percent not fair it all felt like well when i get more gear maybe i could beat you maybe if i play with my talents yeah maybe i could actually beat you that's at least the feeling i want i don't i don't really care about reality sometimes i care about the feeling sometimes in this regard it felt really good eight out of ten works for me both arena pvp bgs overall really like it and actually would like to acquire more gear and play it more so we'll see okay guys so enough quests have been complete in the azure span for the campaign quest to where i've acquired my third dragon the blue drake i've gone ahead and customized this guy a bit too i actually think he's my favorite for sure definitely the best looking dragon and i thought we'd fly for a second together maybe all the way up here and i would show you guys just some gold medal dragon racing that i did while leveling and i'll tell you guys actually how this is my favorite thing about Dragonflight. I know, it's weird. Uh, I can't even make it all the way up. I gotta wait till I recharge. All I know is that I just got addicted to those dragon racing courses very, very quickly. This is quite literally Spyro the Dragon. You have to go through the hoops. The hoops will point you in a certain direction for each ring you go through, let's say. And uh, you have to just follow that. Of course, the more you do the course, you could maybe figure out quicker and uh, more efficient ways to get those really quick times and I was really addicted to that as well. Every course I got my hands on up until I really had to quit doing them so I could actually get this video out and do other content it was that addicting I got gold on and I'm showing you some of those courses as I speak of course these are the beginner courses and I'm pretty confident from hearing about it from my friends that as you get to max level you can actually unlock even more courses and I think there might even be easy and hard mode and stuff like that that is freaking awesome. Yeah, I know it's just another mini game and you might not be into the mini game stuff but this is actually a fun one because it's kind of like racing in World of Warcraft. You can even race other players, and that's really cool. So I did get addicted to that, and I thought it was super duper fun, and I would actually recommend Dragonflight just for that in many ways, because it's actually that fun and that addicting. You gotta be joking me, bro! I need four of these to make it up. Oh my god. Well, the next step, my friends, is going to be to get whatever the final Drake is, complete this campaign to the uh, highest degree we can in this video, and we'll wrap it up right there. But guys, Overall, dragon riding, my first impression of that is like a straight up 10 out of 10. It's very well done. They're going to have a hard time making future expansions without the addition of something like this, actually. And uh, I think a lot of people can look at this and say this is one of the very first expansion-specific additions that you kind of do want to see for the rest of the game. And that doesn't happen often, so when it does, I think it's a really big deal. So I had to wait for my vigor recharges, but we are going to get this, so boom, there we go. Okay, 
That was actually the only one so far that took any kind of effort at all, but let's go ahead and finish our campaign. And there we go, guys. After multiple cutscenes, a lot of questing in Valdraken, completing all the quests in this general area, then coming down to the temporal conflux. Again, a vast variety of cinematics. And finally, I can turn in the quest at Nas Dormer to get, I think, the last dragon, the cliffside Wilder Drake. I don't know how to say that word, bro, but I'll go with what I just said the first time. Uh, okay, what else do we get? Adventure mode. Unlocked access to adventure mode within the Dragon Isles. That's pretty nice. Again, this is something I could have done while leveling, but I did a lot of side quests, and so now here I am doing it at max level. Let's go ahead and check out that brand new dragon we just got. Oh, yeah, there we go, bro. Cliffside Companion. We got it. Oh, okay. You know what? It's not actually bad. It's that all of the other ones are just too small compared to the blue one. Like, this one is just, like, really nice uh, symmetry, right? And then this one is a proto-drake, so you have to like the proto-drake for that to matter. And then this one and this one are, like, really tiny. That's, like, the only problem. If they were bigger, they'd actually compete, aesthetically speaking, I feel like. However, we will use this for a little bit, because why not? Okay, I have to go talk with Alex Straza now, man. Let's make it happen. I don't know how much more of the campaign I've got left, but I think... Hopefully, we're approaching the end. Okay, there we go. Adventure mode unlocked. World quest unlocked. Thank God. Adventure mode unlocked and aid the faction. So let's see what this is about. World quest. Uh, the Dragon Isles need your aid. Check your map for a range of new activities. Okay, adventure mode. Your future characters can do Dragon Isles zones in any order. I thought you could basically already do that. And excess world quest immediately. Cool. Oh, I like that last part. Aid the factions. Gain renown. So that's going to be reputation with the major factions of the Dragon Isles. And prepare for the conflict ahead. So that's my goal now, I guess, is to get more and more renowned. So that's where I'm at right now. I guess that's the end of the video, guys. We did it. We did the whole campaign. We checked out every single mythic dungeon, and we were able to, as quick as we could, get gear to even get in there to begin with, ending on 355 item level. Lots of progress still to be had, but I gotta be honest with you, this was actually an awesome little kind of mini playthrough, right? Uh, from like 63 to 70 and beyond. I think that everything so far is great. In fact, I'll go ahead and say first impressions would have to be something along the lines of just a straight up 9 out of 10. Only because uh, I didn't experience anything bad. I didn't like all the quests, though. There were certain times where I felt like, oh, great, now I have to kill a quadrillion guys again. And uh, I wonder how weird it is for that to be the case. It's like those bonus quests, really, when you have to have a percentage of something. That's where I start to feel some dread. But I pushed through it anyway, and there's probably only, like, maybe... 10 of those the entire time, maybe a dozen or something like that, if you're talking just the campaign, maybe even less, I'm not quite sure, but that's it. Okay, so just one more thing I want to show before we end the video, there are actually more campaign quests we can do, it looks like it's 0 out of 9 chapters, holy crap, I don't know if that's a bug, or if that's actually, I thought maybe it's 1 out of 9 now, but maybe I have to do these 3 first, that's going to be something else for another video, for more progression, all that jazz, but I wanted to show you guys, because I talked about it earlier, the rostrum of transformation, where you can actually design your dragons, this is really sick, especially for people that aren't playing Dragonflight because you just don't think about the fact that you basically have character creation for your dragons and that's just actually really freaking cool. So like even the ones that come out of the box looking a little janky, you can do stuff to them including collecting different colors for them and perhaps even better, you can collect a whole new body type for them as well. Like for this one, for example, it has a full transformation to a Storm Eater. Another one had that too. This one has it to a Crimson Gladiator. Is that the only one? I think it is. So the blue and the red have those special transformations. We just got this little guy though and I do have some new stuff so we can actually see so we have the tail for example and you can see you could do it bare or you can give it spikes like it has right now or a barb thing like a scorpion or a blunt spike let's give it a barb tail because this is more wyvern like to be honest with you I have two horn styles I just got heavy and so heavy looks like it just has like extra creases on it I do like that more and horn color I don't have black yet it's a world drop so it does give you hints for where things could be okay so we have new ears it looks like uh, which is like bear versus having them at all so I'll take them actually i guess i want my guy to have ears and do i want hair on my throat yeah okay he's a bearded dragon i like it so then i can press accept and uh there we go i have my wilder drake and he looks even better and i just really really love this system you can also turn around and talk to the dragon riding trainer and as i collect all of those dragon glyphs in the air like the one you saw me fail in at the beginning of the video you can actually use those glyphs to unlock more abilities. I have six right now, and uh, it also tells you how many are in every single zone, so I've got quite a few to go, but you can actually get an add-on that just shows you where all of them are. So you end up making your way down the tree, and as far as I'm aware, you basically end up with everything, I think, or maybe the last three, you can only have one of them, but I'm not too sure yet. We'll find out eventually. So with those six points, I can pick something right here, Dragon Rider's Initiative, and that looks like just extra damage when you land with your Drake, or I can have Dragon Rider's Compassion, which is extra HP, and extra movement speed after I land. I like that more. I'm going to pick that. 
And do I have to pick both, I wonder? No, I can only pick one for sure. It looks like you might be able to switch between these as well. But the final thing to keep in mind is that I need four now, not just three, to get the second one down here, the restorative travels. And uh, it'll just keep increasing as you go down until they become uh, five, like you see down here. I really like this. A lot of different ways to just make your dragon your own. I didn't know if I was going to like this or not, but I guess I'm a bit of a sucker for customization stuff. So this is pretty cool, and I'd give it a solid A+. Plus. But if you guys enjoyed, the dragon flight playthrough let's go ahead and fly make sure to give this video a like and a subscribe i really enjoyed it It took me like four days to do this of playing and no lifing non-stop three or four days ish and uh, it was definitely worth it so anyway guys i'll see you in the next video it'll probably be an ascension one and then we'll see what happens but mcdoubles out